over at the Das 3D Bryce Talk forum, I've been following with interest a conversation between Horro, Jamie and uh, Dave here that have been having about glass. And one of the things that we're talking about gave me an idea and I just thought I'd put this video together to show you what the idea was. So anyway, right, I'm going to bring in a model that's going to be the focus of this scene. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'm going to use one of these cubes that I made in Wings 3D and uh, at the moment that's just in the default grey and we're under the default sky. So if we make this model into a basic kind of glass, so that's going to be refraction of uh, something like 153, that's glass, and uh, we make the diffuse colour fully white, we don't need diffusion, and we'll give it full transparency. This is a very basic glass material, nothing fancy about that. It's not even got a specular highlight. And, and what Dave was saying was you can't get the specular highlight sharp enough to make a good reflection. So and that's that's you know seems to be quite right. So here we go. We've got our glass and the reflective quality that's appearing on the in the material here is due to reflection being added in when you add transparency, which is something I cover in another video, uh, making a kind of uh, pearlescent effect. I don't know what the quite right the word was, but that's by the by. Anyway, what we're looking at here is the reflections. Now if you use a HDRI image as a backdrop and I'm going to use one of Horro's, one of my favorites, uh, it's this garage one here, right, and I'm just going to increase the value for its intensity. I don't need quality, I'm not going to use any light output from it at all and I'm just going to turn the sun back on there. We'll do render in scene. Now this makes the glass look more realistic because you're getting environmental reflections but it does mean that you've got the HDRI uh, image as a backdrop and uh, if you've got ordinary sky settings and you've not set things up then it'll be polluted by the sky setting you can get over that with turning the atmosphere off and setting it to fully black and then going into the image based lighting tab and where use as a background is uh, selected select add to sky so that you can get a very uh, clean reflection off the backdrop but the problem is half of what's reflected is cut off by the ground plane. If you reduce the size of the ground plane, depending on your camera angle, you'll see that. And if you get any of the sky in there, you can see there's a sharp transition. So having the HDR as a backdrop does help your glass, but it does limit your camera position. So I was wondering was there a way to get around this? And I had a bit of a think. Now, it's not a perfect solution. Very few things are. But if we go back into image-based lighting, and we go and export the image, and export the image as a spherical map here. So we go uh, spherical map of garage and just save that. So that just exports, that's fine, no problem. It doesn't need to be particularly high resolution for this either. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to uh, reset the sky and remember that when you use reset the sky it uh, turns your shadow intensity down, so I'm going to turn that back up. So we're back in a position where we were at the start, but we've got the HDRI image exported as a bitmap. So I'm going to edit the material here, and I'm going to load in that image into the specular channel here. So I put a blob in, in A, go to picture, go into the texture source editor, click on an empty square, navigate to where I saved my image, which, uh, what did I call it? Uh, spherical map of garage, there we go. Load that in there. And then, what I can do, and I don't know whether I'm going to need an alpha channel for this, I've not thought this through entirely, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put an alpha channel in there for now. So I've got the colour providing the specular colour. Now if I give it a specular, whoops, not ambient, I don't want ambient, specular highlight, and then change the specular halo to its almost full luminance value, but not quite, because if it's set up to 255, you get a very harsh transition. So I set it to 254. Okay. Just, uh, that's uh, Camtasia making that uh, hover around. Hang on, I have to go out and back in again. Right, so that's put the image on the specular halo. Now, oh yes, if I now control specularity with the alpha channel, that'll sharpen it up. So now it's not under alpha scaling. So at the moment that's entirely controlled by the alpha channel. If you wanted that control to be a proportion of that output then you would select alpha scaling. Now I don't know whether that's going to be necessary because we're not we'll look to what this effect is like yet. But you can see now through the colour from there coming through the specular channel and the alpha 
from here controlling the specular output and the specular halo being set to almost its full value we've got an image forming on here. The final thing to do then is to set it to a reflection map. So now with our geometry, if we choose actual selection, the image that's shown on the surface will be dependent on the f direction in which the facets of the mesh geometry are uh, whichever direction the pointing between the camera and, and this uh, virtual specular backdrop we've created. So if we check out of this now and render we've got highlights all over and in positions where it would be able to see through the ground it can do because the ground's no longer sort of present as far as this uh, highlight's been uh, concerned. So that's eliminated one of the drawbacks with uh, having the HDRI backdrop producing the reflections because there's now no horizon as far as this surface is concerned. These highlights though will still appear um, when when they couldn't w which is also the other case so it sort of solved one problem and created another one in the same process but because they're being driven by the specular channel if we introduce another object so that they're not just uh, glowing things that interferes with the passage of the light they only appear where the light's falling so that helps uh, sort of increase the realism of the effect there so anyway that's just about wraps it up really that was my idea just to sort of embed uh, the image into the material rather than have it as a background which means that then you can choose to have the background there if you wanted or you could choose a different background or have sky settings and lighting settings so it gives you more control over the material surface and uh, gives you another effect to play with. So anyway, I thought that was uh, thought that was interesting. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that, and you'll have a go at using that in your own renders.